Are you a spreader of fake news? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. On April 1, 1996, the Taco Bell Corporation took out a full-page ad that appeared in six major newspapers announcing it had bought the Liberty Bell and was renaming it the Taco Liberty Bell. Hundreds of outraged citizens called the National Historic Park in Philadelphia where the bell was housed to express their anger. Their nerves were only calmed when Taco Bell revealed a few hours later that it was all a practical joke. The best line of the day came when White House Press Secretary Mike McCurry was asked about the same. Thinking on his feet, he responded that the Lincoln Memorial had also been sold. It would now be known, he said, as the Ford Lincoln Mercury Memorial. On April 1, 1998, Burger King published a full-page advertisement in USA Today announcing the introduction of a new item to their menu, a left-handed Whopper specially designed for the 32 million left-handed Americans. According to the advertisement, the new Whopper included the same ingredients as the original Whopper, lettuce, tomato, hamburger, patty, etc. But all the condiments were rotated 180 degrees for the benefit of their left-handed customers. The following day, Burger King issued a follow-up release revealing that although the left-handed Whopper was a hoax, Thousands of customers had gone into restaurants to request the new sandwich. Simultaneously, according to the press release, many others requested their own right-handed version. People are still falling for hoaxes every day due to the power of the internet and social media like Facebook. Fake news stories appear quite often and mislead a lot of people. Today's first reading is about Stephen, the first martyr. He was appointed one of the deacons to take charge of the day-to-day -day affairs of the new Christian church, while the apostles were to focus on the pastoral dimension of church. Stephen was filled with grace and power, something that was before then only unique to the apostles, who worked miracles. But his newfound power drew the ire of his fellow Jews. They began arguing and debating with him. Saul was probably one of those as he was from Tarsus in Cilicia, and he was present during the stoning of Stephen. They could not beat this spirit-inspired man in the debates that they began distorting his statements and circulating these as his. They made up the story that he said that the worship of God need not be restricted in the temple. They told people that he said Jesus was more important than Moses, and this was actually true. The Sanhedrin, the Jewish court, could not bring themselves to defend against his brilliance. They brought in false witnesses to distort what Stephen was saying. He angered the people when he said falsely, of course, that Jesus would destroy the temple and change all the traditions of Moses. This was somewhat true because these all became irrelevant when Jesus came and his teachings would outlive any of them. We reflect today on our own penchant for the truth or for the bending of it to justify ourselves and our actions. To what extent would you lie when your back is on the wall? How much truth or half-truth would come out of your lips when you want to nail someone on the cross? Let us examine our hearts for a bit and see where the evil one lurks to prod you, to use you, to deceive, to falsify, and to destroy someone so that he may succeed in his devious ways. Jesus is the truth and he sees our hearts. We may be so used to making up lies that we don't hesitate to make the next one if it will fulfill our purposes. It may have become a habit too difficult to erase. Jesus probes us beneath our spoken words. He knows the truth and He wants us to reform, repent, and retract our lies. He wants us to be honest in all things we say and do, even if the truth hurts us. He wants us to be holy. For eventually, the whopper of lies that we utter today will result in whoppers of burned opportunities to ring the bells of heaven to gain entry there. We ask the Holy Spirit today to cleanse us of our fake, filthy, fragmented view of truth and just follow the way, the truth, so that we may have life. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, may my heart be the dwelling place of your Holy Spirit, so that I may only speak of the true, the good, and the beautiful. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.